I didn't know what was going to happen when we finally got to that moment of John Cena and Roman Reigns doing a program together. Now, of course, I envisioned this happening during WrestleMania season and still saying by the fact that that's when it should have happened. But that's not what happened. We're getting it and we're getting it now because Johnny Boy with his bald spots got to go do some Transformers spinoff. Oh, baby. It'll do box office in China. whoop de doo But as this has happened, I really didn't know initially how this is going to play out. Is it going to be one of these things where people hold on to their hatred of Cena from so many years and it elevates Reigns just a little bit and he doesn't get quite as booed? Were things going to be constructed in a way where Cena looks a little better by design, where Cena gets a little less hate and more of that hate gravitates towards the 2.0 version, the Samoa version in Roman Reigns? Was it going to be a thing where both of these guys just kind of piss people off and neither one of them gets more love and if anything, they both get more hated? I didn't really know. And sometimes it's hard to know until it actually happens, but I think we got our answer now. We know what's happening is by design of the WWE and frankly by design of a lot of these hardcore fans, John Cena is getting less hate and Roman Reigns is getting more of your hate. Here's what I don't understand from a WWE standpoint. Is you've put so much behind Roman Reigns. He's main evented three straight WrestleManias. He got the Undertaker's retirement match. He ended the Undertaker's career. He's won world championships. He's won Royal Rumbles. He's been in so many marquee spots and marquee feuds. Why all of a sudden now would you, it seems like, go out of your way to make the guy look so bad? Now, granted, Roman Reigns as the top guy needs to be better, period. He needs to work on connecting with the audience better. He needs to work on telling a story better. He needs to work on being a better character. He needs to, God forsaken knows, work on his promo skills. All of these things to me are true. They cannot be denied. But the WWE goes out because they just can't quit Cena. And they just can't get over their love affair with Cena after all of these years to where they structure things in such a way that they're still trying to prop up the 40-year-old part-time John Cena and undercut and sabotage the guy that you've now invested a few years into trying to make your next John Cena. This makes absolutely no sense. Why would you go out of your way to script promos so heavily in Cena's favor and give Cena all of this leeway that you're not going to give Roman Reigns to where people are naturally, whether fair or not, going to automatically come to the conclusion that because John Cena shot more and said more words, he automatically pooned, buried, and owned Roman Reigns on the freaking mic. And not to mention the fact, to me, a good creative mind in professional wrestling will accentuate the positives of their talents and try to hide, mask, minimize the negatives. You're now sitting there and putting Roman Reigns into a bad place, into an uncomfortable place, which you knew was an uncomfortable place for him for years. And you knew this who he was as a performer, good, bad, or otherwise, when you started shoehorning him in and pounding him into this damn top spot. So we can't just all of a sudden get buyer's remorse now. You can't just sit there and say, oh, we changed your mind. And we know ultimately that WWE isn't changing their mind. That's what's so astoundingly ridiculous about all of this. They're still very bought into Roman Reigns. They still believe in Roman Reigns. They are still going to continue to push Roman Reigns as a top guy. So why would you not go out of your way as much as possible to position Roman Reigns to look as good as possible and make Cena look as bad as possible? I just don't get it. But what I also don't get is why Roman Reigns is getting so much hate. And it feels like I've done a video about this before because I have to a degree. But the passion and intensity that people have in their hatred for Roman Reigns is both ridiculous and hypocritical. The ridiculous component of this is ultimately, I don't give a shit what anybody says. 
the single biggest reason that Roman Reigns gets so much hate is because of not who he is, but who John Cena has been for over a fucking decade. So you hate one guy so much to now where when he squares off against the guy that you view as the Samoan 2.0 version of him, you don't gravitate towards the new guy because at least he's fresh, he's younger, he's newer, and he hasn't had a decade of being pounded down your throat, up your arse, and burying everybody along his path of reign of dominance, of destruction at the top. You're going to sit there and gravitate to Mr. Fruity Pebbles and fucking self, who so many of you have dedicated so much of your adult lives as wrestling fans to trying to hijack shows and talk shit about every step of the way. This is ridiculous. You've been sucked in because he's strategically chosen to put over people in recent years like CM Punk and Daniel Bryan and Kevin Owens and AJ Styles and Nakamura. Notice the names that Cena's putting over. He's not doing that on accident, folks. He's doing it to try and soften some of the hardcore fans towards him. The WWE's doing that. And guess what? Clearly, it's freaking worked. How stupid can you be to not see that this is exactly what the hell is happening right in front of your eyes? But you sit there and hate a guy so much because you hate somebody else. I refuse to believe that it's just because you hate Roman Reigns. It's because in part you hate Roman Reigns, a major part, that you think he's another John Cena. And after a decade plus of the vanilla Wonder Bread, Fruity Pebble, Hustle, Loyalty, and Respect, and you can't see me bullshit a John Cena, you're afraid you're going to get another decade of cock fist in your eye. That's what you're afraid of. It's unbelievable. You hate one guy so much that you hate this other guy being the thought of him. And what's crazy about it, I don't give a shit what anybody says, Roman Reigns is vastly superior as an in-ring performer in terms of his execution, in terms of his storytelling, in terms of his selling on so many different levels. But now I see in recent years... All these people that grew up as John Cena fuckboys, now they've become adults. And all of a sudden, now we love John Cena because he can actually wrestle. The next time he executes a move properly will be the first time he executes a move properly. At least some of the stuff Roman Reigns does actually looks legitimate, looks crisp, looks good. Like you can actually watch a Roman Reigns match and get into it. It is sensible, it is viable, it is believable. It is a story you can connect with even if you don't always like where it's going. Whereas John Cena, it's a bunch of crap. We're going to get to a spot to get to a spot to get to a spot. And you know what? Why even fucking talk about it? Because that's how much so many of you look for in professional wrestling. That's all you fucking look for. And my whole thing here is we get to the ridiculous and now transition into the hypocritical. So many of you knock Roman Reigns for his mic skills. But you are fans of people like Sammy freaking Zayn and Baron Corbin. And freaking thin fucking Balor. And so many of these other guys. So it's okay that these guys blow chunks on the freaking mic. But Roman Reigns isn't good on the mic either. And that's a big reason why you don't like him. And this is coming from the same crew that for so many years, and I've been in this community for years now, and I've seen this happen, and I knew this happened, that so many people used to be Orton fans just because he wasn't freaking John Cena, which in so many ways, because hashtag Breakfast Club rules, bitches, you had the wool pulled over your eyes. Big freaking surprise to me. Orton was every bit as bad, if not worse. And oh, by the way, he was boo-boo on the mic too. But you were okay with Orton burying people and breaking out the Golden Breakfast Club shovel and doing all of this shit and consistently being pounded down your throat. But now Roman Reigns, after a couple of years of being pounded, this is a problem. Oh, his mic skills aren't great like Orton's fucking are. If you love Finn Balor, but you hate Roman Reigns, kiss my ass. One looks like a main event type of guy. The other one looks like a jobber with none of the redeeming qualities of character, charisma, personality, mic skills, or any combination of those like a CM Punk, a Daniel Bryan, and AJ Styles where they can actually get over like a real star is supposed to. And then these people that bash on Roman Reigns are the same ones that were so giggly tits 
when Daniel Bryan was being pounded down your throat in 2014. Everybody whined and pitched a fit after he lost to Bray Wyatt at the Rumble and he went in the goddamn Rumble match. So all of a sudden now, by the time you get to WrestleMania, this guy who couldn't beat Bray Wyatt, Bray freaking Wyatt of all people, think about that three and a half years later. Now he goes on and he's the breakfast club killer. Who gives a shit about the arm injury? He ain't selling it. This is Daniel Bryan's moment. He's the best wrestler in the world. Yes, 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 yes. The same people that shit on Roman Reigns are the same people that were perfectly fine with Seth Rollins being pounded as much as he was. And we have this revisionist history about how things have played out with the three S.H.I.E.L.D. members. Initially, when it came time to split off and make them main eventers, it was not Dean Ambrose, and it most certainly was not Roman Reigns. It was Seth Rollins that was getting the push. It was Seth Rollins that was getting the force. But when it's Seth Rollins, because he was Tyler Black and ROH, and he had that lion streak, it's awesome. And even now, he still dresses like a power Ranger. I tell you what, Roman Reigns on his worst day to me is still more entertaining than Seth Rollins on his best day. And Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose, two guys that you've liked over the years, were so incredibly massively successful as singles performers that they had to reunite the band, get the shield back together to try and salvage these two fucks. You love these cruiserweights with no goddamn personality. You love Sami Zayn and his piss poor ass on so many different levels. So many of you for years loved Dolph Ziggler. Just think about that. <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler. And look at yourself in the mirror and say, shame on me for ever being a fan of this suspect fuck. All these clowns you've liked over the years, but you hate Roman Reigns. Look, I'm not saying you have to love Roman Reigns because I don't really even love Roman Reigns his character. It's not that great. It really isn't. I look at it as kind of an indictment of where the WWE is that a guy like him is actually the top guy. You have what is definitely not a five-star performer being put in a five-star spot, which has been the problem for so many years. And Cena was that guy for so many years. But it's crazy to me now that without all of the burials, without the decade plus of history, so many people now are forgetting to hate John Cena or pretending to like John Cena and hating Roman Reigns because they think he is the next John Cena. Get a clue, get laid, get a life, and most importantly of all, get the fuck over it.